Campus Channel 5, worldwide webcast at FredoniaRadio.com.
to Hunter Long. On defense, we've got Daniel Martinson and Zach White. Chris Hoyt and Jared Belschwinder with you right now. John Cullen will be here soon. Fredonia battling in the offensive zone for the puck. Taken there by Coffin. Played behind the net by Johnson. Laid it around there for Neal, who gets it out of the, the Oswego defensive zone. And touched off sides there by Andrew Barton. An early offsides call just 26 seconds into the contest. Sam Wilbur now on the ice. Marcus Ortiz and Todd Schaus, his wingers. Zach, or excuse me, Jamie Young. And John Carlson, the defenseman on the ice. Face-off won there by Botten for Oswego. Jamie Young wheels around his own net. Flips it ahead for Schaus, who left it on for Wilbur. Played there by Raguseo. Jumps back in there by Holshaw. Played there by Young. Comes to Schaus, but was played further than him by Raguseo. Back to the Oswego captain at the point now, pressured by Schaus, gets down, a one-time shot just wide of the net. Jeff Flagler just getting enough of that save, one minute into the game. Puck played away by Wilbur, tried to play it up the boards, was stopped there by Botten. Send one through the point there, and there goes Ortiz after it. Ortiz with a chance shot, touch oh, off, puts off the rebound, what a beautiful goal, Todd Schaus. He gets uh, behind, um, Schatz gets behind it with Ortiz. Yeah. All right, he gets, he gets uh, behind him, and he's able to stay on the play. He's certainly ready to put home the uh, errant puck. And there he does. Excellent goal. Marcus Ortiz pressured the point man for Oswego. Held his pressure all the way down the ice. Todd Schatz with a rebound goal off the left pass. Zawadzki. I was thinking for a second there that Oswego had some excellent pressure here for the moment, but then that turnaround and Fredonia brings this to the party. Great analysis there, Jared. Oswego did have the puck in the offensive zone for quite some time before that breakout by Fredonia. So, great heads up play. Shouts the goal, believe the assist goes to Marcus Ortiz. A minute and 15 seconds into the game. Taylor Bourne finds Polichuk, past a fallen down defender for Oswego, takes a hit from Barry, left behind the net for Hart. Hart and Polichuk now in the near corner, Polichuk wins it, tried to get one back to Freeman, was stolen there instead by Adams. Brandon Adams, the shot, stick saved by Flagler. Played on the far side by Gerhardson, playing left wing tonight. There is Ross, wheeling around his own net with some room up the middle of the ice. On the far side, it will dump one down to the end of the ice. Played there by D'Olivera. Kept in, played by D'Olivera once again. All the way across the board, who dumps it in. Played behind his own net by Flagler. Zach White now in the near corner. Down to our left. Puck is still battled for there. Down there is Trent DeRocher. Excuse me, DeRocher. And out back around. Bodied there by Martinson. Flipped along by Long. And Kaufman up the near side now. Taken there by Johnson. He reels in front of his own net. A shot from the point is just barely covered up by Flagler. A good start here for the Blue Devils. Up one nothing. Jarrett, what a great start. Certainly. Uh, as I said, there's momentum, and uh, right now, after that goal, it seemed to be a little bit more back and forth, but it was good to see, really, uh, Fredoni putting the effort in to uh, get, keep their head in the game. Face-off, one there by Fredoni in the far corner, flipped along by Bourne, kept in by Oswego. Puck blocked to the corner, Young plays it now on the backhand, gotten out by Gerhardson, played there by Barton. Barton wheels and deals. Left four on the far side there was Kenny Neal. Puck in front was loose and played above the mesh on the far side. Flagler with another save. He's looked solid here early. 
We certainly saw it, and uh, early on we didn't exactly have an idea of who was going to start, but uh, I think it's obvious to say that Flagler, the senior, uh, gets the start. <laughs> it's nice to see everyone all on the ice. Fredonio wins another face-off. That one taken by Long. Freeman flipped one on for Morgan, who tried to play one up the far wall for Kaufman. Instead was taken by a trio of Oswego defenders. Ross makes one move and flips it up the near wall, played there by the captain, Raguseo. Excuse me, Raguseo threw an extra L in there. On the far side, Herlihy plays it ahead, gotten back on by Neal, who leaves it now for Raguseo. Flips up again, Herlihy plays it down. Behind the net is Flagler, left there for Freeman, wheeling around his net. Taken by DeMarco. Morgan got chopped. Just could have been knee on knee. A shot there by DeMarco. We've got a delayed penalty here on Oswego. Zach White finds Marcus Ortiz, who goes around his own net. Played by a pair of Oswego defenders. And the Lakers will finally touch up the puck to get a stoppage of play. Fredonio will have a power play just over four minutes into this contest. It'll be number 11, David Ferreira, heading to the box for Oswego. Just trying to keep an ear out for what the call is, but I, I, I keep saying momentum. It seems to be word of the day all of a sudden, but uh, it's an excellent chance to put that to good use and get a good lead in here early. A recap, if you're just joining us, Fredonia scored less than a minute, 20 seconds into the game. Todd Schaus put home a rebound on the shot in close from Marcus Ortiz. Fredonia on the power play. Wilbur, Bourne, Freeman, Polichuk, Gerhardson, the five on the ice. Gerhardson comes up with four men in front of him. Tried to find Bourne on the near side, was sticked away there. Good luck, class. We got to keep the stick on the ice, get that puck. I believe that was tipped away by the Swede, Christopher Brunn, skating on defense for Oswego. An errant pass was played on by Herlihy, left one for his defenseman, Brunn, and it is able to be picked up there by Jimmy Morgan. Jimmy Morgan up the far side of the ice, leaves one around for Wilbur. Waiting for it on the near wall is Gerhardson. He tips one back down to Jimmy Morgan. Gerhardson and Morgan, and now Long behind the Oswego net. Hunter Long on the far side, one of the three assistant captains for Fredonia. Down to Jimmy Morgan. Morgan finds Wilbur at the point. White looking. Down to Gerhardson. White, a shot high, blocked away by an Oswego defender. Morgan tried to get the spin shot on net, was blocked away again. White, a pass to Morgan, a backhander, saved by Zawitski. Jimmy Morgan back down to Hunter Long. And a pass played all the way down to Flagler with just 23 seconds left to play in this Fredonia power play. They'll have to regroup and maybe have a chance for one more rush as they get a line change. Not a lot of shots here, but uh, certainly some good positioning. Jelinski on the near side. Tried to look for DeMarco in the middle, who sticked away there. DeMarco stops in the far corner down to our right and is played away by Raguseo. White keeps it in. A shot was blocked by Jelinski intentionally. White able to play it on further for DeMarco in the corner. Comes back up near White, but was taken instead by Barton. Barton left one for Holshoff, who takes a hit. Zach White spins and leaves it for, I believe that is Minello. Jelinski now on the near wall. Tried to find DeMarco, was played away by Raguseo. Flagler will catch it and leave it back behind his net. Back up the near side. Jamie Young lost it. Oh, Oswego would have had a chance. Holshoff was wide open behind the defense. Pass was just out of reach from him. That's, the, front. Uh, that's the second time Dalavera has tripped over just the ice in general. Maybe should invest in some new skates. Rebound left. Played there by Hart. Hart on the far side found a streaking Holshoff, who plays one up the far side for Ferreira. Was loose in front. That's off the moor for the moment. The net yep. did indeed come off its moorings. I believe that was Carlson who got dumped into the post there.
John talks all the time about the shift after a goal. There have been several, but Fredonia has played well, keeping the puck out of the back of the net, has been Jeff Flagler, with the help of the five men on the ice in front of him. Left there for Ross. Ross plays one of the far side. Morgan couldn't get it any further, so Long helped it. Kaufman in there on Brunt. Hits him, puck is on the near side. Johnson fakes one way, goes the other, back to Brunn. Played one on and was bounced pinball style. Eventually into the chest of Adams. Was then played along by a Fredonia defender. Dumped back in behind Flagler. It's dumped along the near side, played past Johnson. And back up to touch on the icing is the Oswego captain, Chris Raguseo. Some loose passes there. I'm not really seeing a lot of uh, crisp passes. Um, just maybe if it's just something going on back and forth, but uh, certainly not anything too serious to be worried about just yet. Played there by Raguseo, a shot across, was blocked away in front by Jimmy Morgan. It looks okay after taking that one to the midsection. Played here by Boyd. In now, sticked away. Here is Taylor Bourne. Looked like he got interfered with Bourne. Tried to make a move. Puck is loose in front. And it goes back behind the net. Played there by Raguseo, he who still has the puck. Tried to find a man on the far side. Was played along by Boyd. And then Martinson got it and played it back into the Oswego defensive end. On the far side now, Boyd tried to play one further. Stopped there by Bourne. Back behind his own net again is Raguseo. Up the near side to Sneath. Played back by Polichuk. Boyd tried to find Gerhardson. Welcome to the broadcast, John. Yeah, thanks for having me on there. Boyd took a knee on knee there. No call there, but here's Oswego with a chance. That's Boyd, the native of Rochester, will chip it in behind the net. Back behind now, Minello left one on for Young. Ooh, White takes a big hit there. Correction at Young. Block squirts free here into the neutral end. It'll be connected. And it'll be sent back in. Here's a chance. Wines fires and just up into the netting. J Jamie Young doing a good job getting his stick on the puck. Chris, and we've seen Young undersized, but does a good job using that stick there, really forcing the play. Absolutely. That one, that shot by Barton would not have even hit Zidane Chara in the face, folks. Uh, an excellent viewpoint from one of the best in the best <laughs> business, my partner, Chris Hoyt. Face off here, squirts free to the point. Kept in, and it'll be rimmed along in behind the Fredonia net. It's actually on the near wall now. Hurla Hay left one back, now behind the Fredonia net for Neal. Neal on the near faceoff circle, moves around one defender, left it for Hurla Hay. Hurla Hay lost it, was kept in somehow by Hart, and Flagler will catch that one and stop play. 10.27 left in the period. Fredonia on top, one to nothing, shouts the goal off the rebound for Marcus Ortiz. You know what, we talked about in the beginning of the year, bright future for this Blue Devil Club. Lots of youngsters in the lineup, and Todd Schaus really com coming into his own year as of late. Face off connected here, and it'll be controlled by Oswego. Loose puck here, it'll be sent down the goal line. Oswego rims it ahead to the boards. On the near ball now. Played by Kaufman. Left one on the far side for Young. Excuse me, Long. Long played one into the face of Zawadzki. And he covers up. Interesting storyline for the backup goaltenders here for Oswego. I went over and talked to the Oswego broadcasters before the game and they, they made me aware. There were three goaltenders listed on the Oswego roster. One of them had to quit midway through the season to focus on his academics. Who knew? The other backup is injured tonight. So, the backup goaltender, currently on the bench wearing number nine for Oswego, the son of longtime NHL goaltender Curtis Joseph, Taylor Joseph, the forward. No way. Wow. I kid you not, John. That is an incredible storyline indeed. Just goes to show you why my partner is good at what he does. He saw the a chance in front. Flagler makes a big save. Flagler, one of several great saves here so far. Well, here comes Polichuk with speed. Polichuk in over the line. Shot blocked. Polichuk still with it. Here, Hartson and the defenseman turn forward, unable to come up with the puck, and we're streaking back the other way is Adams. Adams shot just a bit too high. 
That one played into one of the sorority signs cheering on the Fredonia hockey team on the far side mesh. Oswego right to left in their green, primarily green uniforms with yellow and white trim, or gold and white if you will. Fredonia left to right in their home whites, the blue shorts and stripes. That'll be Jolinski battling there with Barton. We'll have an offside call here, Chris. What did you see there on the Todd Schaus goal to open the scoring? Johnny, it was a it was a two on one momentarily, and then there was a second defender back skating with Todd Schaus. Uh, Ortiz put one on the net, and Schaus was able to to find the rebound and put it home uh, to give Fredonia a lead. A minute 15 seconds into the game, John. Some great insight there from my partner Oswego has possession here on the half wall. Ooh, DeMarco takes a bump. He's still working for it. Manello gets the better of his man. Puck will be sent all the way down for an icing. I believe DeMarco got a face full after Barton was hit ugly into the boards on that one. So, I, I, I mean, Barton was, was already down, you know, crouched over on the wall and uh, was, was helped into the boards, if you will, uh, by a Fredonia player. So that is probably why DeMarco got a face full of glove and stick. A good save there from Flagler on a point shot. Oh, the nifty move behind the net. Oswego wins it back. Point to point, sent back down. Oh, some great movement. It'll be chipped high and wide. A good stick there defensively. Daniel Minello and Kyle Jelinski combining for the defensive play, causing Oswego to have to go out of the zone and come back in to make a rush. On the near side, now Hulshoff left for D'Olivera, barely kept in, and now, excuse me, played by Ortiz, getting help from Schaus on the far side now. Played behind his net, Ferreira. Ferreira still with the puck on the near wall, sticked away there by Ortiz. A good poke there by White. Gets it out to the neutral zone, stopping and dumping back in is Alex Botten. Gotten there again by Zach White, behind his own net. Gotten by Botten, and there's Zach White, a high flip. Glove down by Wilbur, he loses it, but Martinson comes up with it here. Martinson plays his man hard, and it, oh, and a big hit there from Kaufman. Kaufman hit the Swede. Christopher Brun into the boards. Number 24 is going at it. Flagler behind his net to the side, actually. Played along now for White. White leaves it on for Kaufman. Kaufman, puck was stopped there by Barry. Cameron Barry on the far wall takes a nice hit from Zach White. White layers a boom there, and here's the puck. Off the referee, and it'll be squirted in. Played by White, connected there from Morgan. Morgan's board pass a bit too far for his man. Here's Hunter Long giving chase. Brunt comes up at Frost Rigo. Adams will send it in now. Flagler behind his own net once again. Backhands one on to Young. Young plays it on the near side to Hunter Long. Tried to dump one in, was sticked away by Raguseo. Long got it in eventually. Played by Gerhardson, and now on the far side, Andrew Barton. He'll leave one back behind the net for Federer. On the near side, Herlihy. Herlihy dekes one, leaves it back for Federer on the far side. Carlson was lining his man up and instead nicked his own man. A backhand stop there by Flagler. Not sure where the puck is. It appears to be under the senior. Oswego uh, arguing that that puck went in. Really awkward, Chris. <laughs> And I apologize for those listening at home that are steer. The third broadcaster in the booths are my, <laughs> in the booth is my hiccups. Apologies there, and I wish I could do better here. Uh, I, a fair argument there from Oswego, nonetheless. But uh, Flagler ends up making the save, at least in the opinion of the referee. And with it being behind the net is Gerhardson. Gerhardson plays one along for Jimmy Morgan, was just off the bench, but was kept in by Oswego. Flagler out to play it, and we saw there that the faceoff play that Fredonia's run a couple of times here just wasn't able to get it done there. Here's a chance here behind the net. 
Oswego controlling the puck. It'll be sent in around the boards. Oh, and a nice pass there. Shot from the point. Flagler makes a beautiful save. Chris, and we've seen Flagler has had such a great career here. The, the wins and losses really doesn't do him justice. He's, he's been a, a catalyst to this Fredonia team. What did you see there from that big save? You know, Flagler just seeing the puck very well. His defenseman helping him out, getting the offense, offensive man from the Lakers out of the way so he could have a clear lane at the puck. Flagler, just as good of a goaltender as he is a guy. I have a class with him. Great to talk to. Number 31 in your programs, number one in your hearts. <laughs> Jeff Flagler. <laughs> Classic line from my best oh! podcast partner. A shot was played there by Zawadzki. But, John, one thing I want to touch on, uh, going back to before the save, the face-off play. You see that one. The forward gets on the near side of the bench, and Jimmy Morgan gets off the far side looking to beat the icing call. You see the Blackhawks do that all the time in the, in the NHL and the, the Tampa Bay Lightning, both quick wingers. They can get up the ice and beat that icing call. Absolutely, Chris. That's incredible. You're able to, to draw that connection there. Perhaps by they're two of the best teams in the National League. Imagine that. Just a bit offside. But, but one more time, uh, Coach Merritt is very creative with those face-off plays, and we've seen them work a lot to our advantage. If you go down to the far face-off circle, down to our right, Marcus Ortiz, who so often plays the left wing as he is tonight, when he gets the face-off down there, he's on his forehand to just go right to the middle of the ice and score a goal, and we've seen him do it several times before. They have hit that play more times than I can count, Chris, and that is just some excellent insight. That's why you're one of the best in the business. That is why you've been nominated for the Ivy Pass. Oh! Excuse Watch me for out, the folks. Up into the stands, and that'll be a souvenir for somebody in the bleachers. That almost hit the feet of the Oswego broadcasters, and they look to be okay. I mentioned earlier, I went over and talked to the gentleman here from Oswego doing the radio tonight, and uh, I, I must say, they are kind, and they are ridiculously well-dressed, very colorful, as is my own broadcast partner here. They get brownie points for having ties on, but they look fantastic. Ties were optional on this side of the broadcast booth as Oswego comes up with it here. To, to the point, wide fires Flagler, gets a piece of it with his blocker. Jelinski, a high flip. Oh, and he'll find DeMarco. DeMarco in by himself. De DeMarco, a strong play there as the rest of his linemates complete a much-needed change. Oh, and a chance here. Oh, and it just misses. In now for Oswego, a three on two. Luckily, Fredonia got back quickly on defense. A shot was blocked away by the stick of Ortiz, and here is Ortiz battling Raguseo. And they're gonna get Ortiz oh. on the penalty call. Looks like a hold. Come, come on! That's a real questionable call, Chris. We're waiting here for the delayed penalty to be called. And you'll see Oswego make some moves here. There's Adams with it. He'll leave it for his man. Plays it to the point. Back down to the half wall. Turns, fires. Oh, no, it's a fake pass shot. Gets it back. Here's a another chance. Oswego still with it. Oh, a shot off the skate in front. And it's still not blown dead. Oswego still with the puck. Raguseo now on the near point. Fakes the shot. Passes instead. Adams now. Far point. Federal. Back to Federal up top. Raguseo now. Raguseo a shot blocked by Schaus. Six on five. Oswego waiting on the delayed penalty. Raguseo over to Water Street. Water Street skating it now. Found, found Federal on the far side, but he whipped on the one-timer. Oswego able to keep control of the puck. It looked like Fredonia got a piece there, but no call. It's still with it here. Water Street to the top. Raguseo, he moves it across. Oswego, wow, some great movement here is Adams. Why flies old Flagler with a huge save there. Chuck, unable to get it out. Sorry, Chris, you can go ahead here. Saved by the shoulder, Alex Botten has the puck. Skates right back into the Fredonia zone. Adams with it now on the near side. Back down to Botten on the far side now. Raguseo on the point, and it's still not played by Fredonia. On the near side, Botten. Back up to Raguseo. A fake shot there. And finally, oh, Flagler! Another big save. Carlson comes up with it, Chris. A couple of times there under the lead call. Looked like Fredonia even had a touch of it. What are your thoughts? Well, John, we've seen this before. 
not just in the SUNYAC, but if you watch any sort of college hockey game or NHL game, the, the team that the penalty is called on has to have full control and possession of the puck. I think that is the argument the referees would make there. You know what, Chris? Absolutely right. That's my fault. I didn't have some good insight there, but like you said, full control. But that leaves a lot of gray area. Interpretation and of the referees, absolutely. You know what? Thank you. That's what I was looking to say. Gosh darn it. You are very good at what you do, sir. Played down on the ice by Hunter Long. Marcus Ortiz, the man in the box for two minutes. Fredonia able to start this penalty kill off very well with the puck in the Oswego defensive zone. Hunter Long in on the strong four check. Played on the far side. Now Hulshoff will dump one in. Flagler couldn't reach it. Played here by Herlihy. Left along there. Herlihy plays one back down for Barton. Barton plays one up. Raguseo on the far side is Holshoff playing the point. Raguseo back down here. Raguseo a one-timer padded away by Flagler. Oswego maintains possession. Holshoff back to Raguseo. Back to Holshoff a one-timer blocked oh, in front by Gerhardsen. What a stung him. What a block from Gerhardsen. Oswego is a chance in front. Back door a wide open cage and it's cleared out by what? Max Ross. What a beautiful penalty kill here by Fredonia. Still a minute to go. Two minutes left in the period. Here's Raguseo on the far side to Holshoff. Holshoff a shot. And another save from Flagler. Blocked away by the senior from Owen Sound, Ontario. Oh, a great play there from Zach White. He's able to play his man Hart. Oswego still with possession here. Early eight. His pass intercepted by White, and he'll clear it the length of the ice. What would almost have been an empty net goal is instead played by Zawadzki. He waits for some offensive help, and he'll get it in the form of Sean Federer. Chris, excellent, excellent viewpoint from you, but the, the penalty kill from Fernonia looks strong. Coming back the other way, here's Oswego. Played to the point. He's rubbed off by his man, Kaufman. Played back now below the Fredonia net. Puck is still loose there. Five seconds left in the penalty kill. Played up top by Federo. Left across for Johnson. Johnson plays it down to Pine. Gotten in front. Ball played away by Flagler. Back to five on five hockey. What a save there again by the senior. Adams on the far side. Skating now. Whiffs on a pass. Gotten by Martinson. Tried to lead one for Ortiz. Icing is waved off as Ortiz was right on the heels of Johnson. You even know that that hybrid icing was waved off. It sure looked like Oswego deserved to get that call. Once agree, again, John. it is that subjective call there, and it's coming back the other way, back to five on five. And excellent, excellent kill from the Blue Devils. Carlson will collect it here. 15 seconds to go here in the first period. Long lead pass, finds Morgan. Morgan leaves it for Schaus. Here comes Todd Schaus. Schaus in front, finds Morgan. Oh, he gets tied up. Five seconds to go. One more chance here. Oh, a lead pass. We'll have a chance here at the buzzer. Flagler with a big save. Jeff Flagler, what a period. The senior goaltender from Fredonia faced 16 shots and kept them all from touching the nylon, at least behind him. At the other end, Matt Zawadzki, five saves on six shots for the Blue Devils. Oswego dominating play shot-wise. Fredonia, the higher number on the scoreboard. Chris, wow, 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 what an excellent period there from both sides. But you know what? It's hard for us to call a period like, like that, besides the hiccups. <laughs> you know what, Chris? We saw some back and forth action there. Flagler, a big save there in what is his final collegiate game. He wears his emotions on his sleeves. You see the heart just in his game there. What a save there at the end. Yeah, amazing body movement and control by Flagler, nonetheless. So, uh, folks, Fredonia takes a one nothing lead into this first intermission. John, I know you got here a little bit late. What did you see? You know what? Apologies to all those listening at home. I was blessed with the, the birth of my beautiful baby daughter, Hadley Harper Cullen, and that's kept me on my toes here. Apologies for being a little bit late, but you know what? I know that I got one of the best in the business as my partner, Chris. You do an excellent job keeping everything the, holding the fort here. But you know what? Since I got here, you know what? You see Fernonia doing a good job at controlling the play in the neutral zone. So, 
something that we've talked about quite a bit. Early on the season, they didn't have a lot of success. They saw their opponents really get get speed through the neutral zone and cap capitalize on those odd man rushes. I thought that they did a good job really limiting the chances for Maswego, very high power team that, you know, if you give them chances, they're gonna put them in the back of the net. They did a good job there. Also, going the other way, what can they do, Chris, to gener generate more offense? That's a good question. You know, I, I almost asked Coach Lisi before the game what the strategy was tonight. I didn't, but, uh, you know, nonetheless, um, Fredonia, only six shots here in this first period. They definitely need to get it going, and I don't I don't doubt that they will. You know, uh, plenty of high-powered talents here on this Blue Devil team, Taylor Bourne, Marcus Ortiz, just to name a couple. Uh, and we saw Todd Schaus. You mentioned the freshman as soon as you got here, John. A bright future indeed. Several freshmen have been impact players for sure this year. And, and Chris, I couldn't have said it better myself. And you know what? Enough with the moral victories. You want to see actual victories. But it's hard to ignore just how bright this future is. You, you hear that all the time. It's almost a cliche of sorts. Oh, uh, you know, look, look forward. But really, really, the freshmen in this lineup, unbelievable. What you talk about, Bobby Polichuk, the young man has come on as of late. This, this guy's got 23 points now. He's at a point per game. You look at a guy like Jimmy Morgan, the freshman sniper, nine goals. Many of those nine have been awesome. Sam Wilbur, listed as a sophomore. He's still his first year in Fredonia. He's been great. Top. Todd Schaus, and then you talk about all the bright spots on the back end. Carlson, uh, Freeman, Ross, excellent, excellent play. And then how about the play from big Eric Bogart. I'm a goalie coach here, pleasure to work with. The, the sky truly is the limit. And funny to say that because he's 6'6". He's pretty close to it. <laughs> Absolutely, John. So great insight to end this first period here. Fredonia 1-0 up on the scoreboard. Todd Schaus with the assist from Marcus Ortiz gets the puck past starting goaltender for Oswego, Matt Zawadzki. Jeff Flagler, 16 aves, 16 saves, excuse me, in net for your Blue Devils. So uh, for John Cullen and Jared Belschwinder, I'm Chris Hoyt. I'm going to send it back to the station for the intermission. Thank you for listening on WCBF FM 88.9, The Voice, WDBL 89.5, The Inferno, and broadcasting worldwide at FredoniRadio.com.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Oswego and Fredonia here on the ice tonight. Face off of the second period, the opening one was won by Fredonia, and we've got a chance here for Oswego. Hurlahe in across the line. Puck blocked by Ross, was in his equipment momentarily, and played back out there to be had by Oswego in the neutral zone. Right back in, Neal. Pass between the legs of Freeman. Played in the far side by uh, Ross. Bodied there by Herlihy, and now Benton. Excuse me, Barton. Played there by Neal behind the net. A shot, and an early goal there. Andrew Barton. The shot in front from the junior. Puck was laid out in front by Kenny Neal. And just like that, Andrew Barton evens the game at one early in this second period. It's amazing how the starts of periods go the wrong way for the goaltenders. Fredonia scored a minute and 15 seconds into the first period. And now Oswego has scored 35 seconds into this second period. Jeff Flagler in that for your Fredonia Blue Devils. Matt Zawadzki for Oswego. Now each goaltender has allowed one goal. Off the skate of Kaufman out to Federo. Back behind Flagler. Now Zach White with it. Zach White on the far wall. Played down there by Raguseo. Flipped on, looking for Botten. Botten will get there. Hits White momentarily. Battled four in the near corner, down to our right. Fredonia right to left in their white jerseys and blue trim. Oswego from left to right in their green jerseys with white and yellow trim as Flagler makes a save there. His 17th. Always good after giving up an early goal like that, Chris, to, to really track the puck well. You saw him there really over-exaggerate that track. It's something we work on a lot, but how often have we talked about really starting and ending periods been a kind of an Achilles heels of sorts for the Blue Devils? Absolutely, John. Face-off taken there by Carlson. Gotten from him by Adams. Back to Hart. Across to Dolivera. A shot there by Adams. Padded away by Flagler. A big save there coming right to left from Flagler. He makes an excellent save. And here we go. Ortiz starts to rush for the Blue Devils. He makes one man miss. He's... Oh, and he layers a boom there, and he makes a big hit. Carlson, correction, that's Wilbur, and um, he gets beat. Long shot, oh, and that looked tricky. Flagler is lucky that one was wider than that, or else it might have been 2-1 Oswego. Flipped on by Schaus, played there by Johnson. Was sticked back in by Wilbur, and Johnson will have to recoup back behind his own net, played across to Hart. Hart leaves it on for Water Street. Water Street, 6'5", 235, out of Northville, Michigan. The big, strong center for Oswego playing the top line tonight. Oswego breaking back out the other way. Water, excuse me, that's not Water Street. I believe that is DeRocher. Here comes Max Ross with it. Ross plays up boards, pass to DeMarco. DeMarco's pass just misses Jelinski. No icing, and it'll be collected here from the Oswego team. Coming back the other way now. Chipping it in there. But Martinson comes up with it. It's chipped free into the neutral zone. Played there by Brunn. Across to Federo. Back up to number 20, Connor Boyd. Played in the far side by Martinson. On to fellow Swede, Gerhardson. Played back here by Federo. Beating Polichuk to the puck. On the far side, Hurley tried to tip one out of the zone. Was kept in there by Taylor Bourne. Raguseo found a streaking Benton up the middle of the ice, but Zach White able to get to the puck first for the icing call. Now, Chris, opening goal early. We talked about it a little bit. We talked about it all season long. What did you really see there? What led to it? What was the breakdown that ultimately resulted in this game being tied up? Oswego had the puck down low. It was Kenny Neal behind the net, and he just sauced one in front for Barton, and he one time blasted it over the shoulder of Flagler to tie the game, Johnny. Was not kept in there by Young, but he's able to keep the Oswego player away from the puck. Played there by Kaufman. Freeman, laid, excuse me, that was uh, Morgan who laid an Aaron pass 
Played now by Carlson, back behind Flagler. Carlson's getting up the far side, now gets one on to Kaufman. Oh, a nice play there from Ortiz. He's able to chip it in. That's correction, that's Kaufman. Oh, and some collisions here. And it'll be played ahead now by Oswego. Still loose, puck bounces in front. Or Hunter Long, correction, able to get just enough of it. Hunter Long plays his man now in the corner. He squirts it up to Mitch Kaufman. Mitch Kaufman gets the puck knocked off his stick. <laughs> And that'll go into the empty door of the Us We Go bench. Silly play there. Probably the first time I've ever seen that one, John. 15-47 to play in this second period. Us We Go tying the game. Todd Schaus scored early in the first period for your Blue Devils. And Andrew Barton able to get that one back for Us We Go. The assist to Kenny Neal and Mitchell Herlihy. The assist on the Todd Schaus goal to Sam Wilbur and Marcus Ortiz. Some discussion here from your officiating crew as they're trying to figure out, Chris, where this puck will be dropped. And it turns out it'll be center ice draw alongside Chris Hoyt. I'm John Cullen in what will be our final broadcast of the year. And it's been an absolute pleasure, Mr. Hoyt. Absolutely, Mr. Cullen. A big hit there from Ross. Puck gets loose. In behind the Fredonia goal, Wilbur and Ross battling for the Blue Devils. Wilbur comes up with it. No, that's a little bit too soon on my part. Wilbur finally gets up for it. He finds Schaus. Schaus sends a long puck down, giving a foot race as Ortiz. He's unable to get it, and it'll be J.J. Hart, the junior from Frisco, Texas, being played hard there by another Texas native. That'll be Marcus Ortiz. He's also from Richardson. Oh, correction. He's from Richardson. J.J. Hart for us. We goes from Frisco. Face off. One here by the Blue Devils. The smooth skating freshman defenseman. Um, that'll be Freeman. He plays it up, and his pass intercepted. Center out. Oh, Flagler into play. He makes a good heads-up play. Gets there first. Ortiz backhands it. He loses it. Freeman into play. His man now. Still loose. Coming up with it here is Ferraria. Ferraria. Ross in on his man. That's number seven, Holshoff. Holshoff's pass to the point. Shot just wide. Squirts loose here. That'll be collected and played back to the point from Hart. Oh, Hart's tip off the post. Oh, wow, what a chance there, Chris. Lucky the iron was in favor of the Blue Devils there. Todd Schaus takes a hip check from D'Olivera. Played on the near side now by Botten. Botten avoids a hit from Minello just off the bench. And there's Jelinski on the near side. In the corner, up the wall now. Martinson shoots, blocked away by Holshoff. Played in the far corner by, Pe or excuse me, by Barry. Jelinski hits another man, that's Holshoff, and coming back up with it now, Botten. Botten left one on for Pe uh, Barry. Played by White, who takes a hit from Barry. Now DeMarco on the near wall, takes a hit from Adams, leaves it, leaves it on for Martinson, who plays one, and Zawadski sticks it away Ooh. from his net. A weird looking hit there. Puck still loose. Oh, here's a chance. Jelinski winds, fires. Puck bouncing around. Taylor Bourne searching for it along with DeMarco. Puck kept in by Zach White, and it'll be coming back the other way. Oh, and another big hit there. Jelinski gets to it first. His stick shatters. He throws it away. Zach White in to help. Loose puck behind the net. Martinson plays his man. It's still loose. On the far side now. Taken by Brun down to Adams. Adams working behind the net. Played up to the near side to Johnson. Too far for him. Jelinski will hustle to the bench in favor of some fresh legs in the form of John Carlson, who just gets back to the puck, able to beat Durocher to the puck. Martinson in the near corner down to our right, and we have a stoppage of play. And there's a second puck on the ice, Johnny. Never a good sign. <laughs> That's an interesting one, Chris. Just a few too many pucks on the ice. And that'll be a whistle coming check. up here. And we'll have a face-off here to Flagler's glove side with 13-11 to go here in the middle period. And it'll be one-to-one, -one your score one here. Oh, and a nifty move there from the big defenseman for us. We go, he makes a power move in front and squirts just wide. 
Puck sent all the way behind the net. There's Jamie Young in to help Hunter Long. Tries to seal his man, but it gets back to the point. Played across. Oh, a long seam pass. He has a chance there. Oh, what a play. It's loose. Still loose. Battling for it here. Wow, lots of confusion. Chris, what's the call here? Flagler was down and out. There were several Blue Devils and Lakers on the ice. Still no call. Officials conferring behind the Fredonia net. We might have a penalty shot here. They're talking about in the corner. Some real confusion going on here. It's pandemonium. 12.44 to play in this second period. Some confusion amongst the officials. Did the puck go in? Was it under a player? Is it a goal? Is it a penalty shot? Is it just a stoppage of place? So what are those? <laughs> You know what, Chris? We've had so much fun up here. I know we're doing a, a job here, but it really, it makes my job fun. It's always been a pleasure. I've learned so much from you throughout this process. I just want to take a quick note and a quick thank you to all those behind the scenes, from the camera crew to the tech guys, to everybody working back at the radio store to make this. Oh, and we have a penalty shot. There'll be a penalty shot here. I think, unless it's a goal, and they're calling it a goal. Wow, and they're calling it a goal. What is going on here? That is absolute garbage. What a terrible call. I don't even know what's happening. Loud noises. Referee explaining it to coach. And it'll be a goal for number 19, TJ Sneed. Assists to number 20, Connor Boyd, and number 23, Sean Federo. What, what just happened? Nobody knows. Wow. We're going to try to get an answer for you after the break. Don't even know. I haven't even seen that ever call. Wow. Long lead pass from Flagler. Played there by Zawadzki. So Oswego takes a 2-1 lead, and they're coming right back. Mitchell Herlihy on the far side. Takes one to the wall and gets oh, a Oh, come on! Freeman. And Max Ross will What's touch the up call the there? What's the call there? You know what? Really confusing stuff. You just want to see consistency. And after that last head scratcher of a play, Chris, do you have any idea what was the call there on the goal? Uh, on the goal, I don't know. I, like I said, I saw several Blue Devils on the ice. Uh, the only thing I could imagine is that it snuck under one of them into the net. I don't know how the heck they figured out that it was in the net, let alone who put it there. But uh, nonetheless, a, a goal on the board for Oswego. And now Michael Freeman will be in the box. Two minutes for, I would assume, elbowing, if anything, for Fredonia. Really, really confusing stuff. You hate to see that, that bounce go the way of the Lakers. Uh, anyways, power play chance here. One time shot just wide off the side of the net. And that'll be played here, controlled by Oswego. Working to the top here. Another one time chance. Oh, and a huge block there from Kaufman. The heart and soul of this Blue Devils team comes up with an excellent block. Here's a chance here. One time shot. Oh, Flagler with a robbery of a save there. Hulk Kaufman <laughs> battling with it. Sorry for the interruption there, Chris. Kaufman takes a big hit. Oh, still loose. Oh, and a great diving play there. Another one-time chance. Rebound in front. Still loose. Buck is loose in front. Flagler with an unbelievable save. On the far side now, Neal spins with it. Played there by Martinson. Helped around by Barton. Barton with the puck. Gotten by Neal once again. Neal spins in the far corner away from Martinson. Barton now on the far side. Barton leaves one to the top for Raguseo. Raguseo on the near side to Hulshoff, who's fired four missiles at the net of Jeff Flagler here on this power play. Hulshoff's out. <laughs> I love it, John. On the far side, Hurlahay. Back to Barton. Barton. Looking, passes one, back to Hurlihay, right in front of Flagler. Hurlihay circles again. A shot that was whiffed on by Holshoff and kept in by the same man, number seven. Lost it momentarily, able to backhand it to Hurlihay. 30 seconds to go in this penalty to Michael Freeman. Two minutes for roughing was the call. On your side, Neil again. 
Neal circles with it, tried to find his man down low, was gotten by White as far as Holshoff and kept in once again by the big number seven. Magusayo on the far point, on the near point to Holshoff. Holshoff found Marin on the far side. Oh, what a save by Flagler. Flagler. By Herlihan. Wow, what a save there. Three seconds, two seconds. Oh, and another block in front. We're all even here, but Fredonia's still scrambling. Here's a chance in front. Oh, Flagler, another save in front. Wow, what a save. That is just incredible goaltending. Pardon my enthusiasm. Wow. Some real confusion going on. Kaufman gets caught without his stick. Maybe take a second, Chris. Just tell us how difficult it is for a penalty killer to play without his stick. It's very hard. Uh, it's even harder for a goaltender to play without his stick. Lucky Flagler had his there. Flagler, in that power play, stopped about six one-timers. Incredible work there from Flagler, keeping the score at 2-1 to one Oswego halfway through this second period. Johnson now with it at the point. Adams left it around for Water Street. Also there is Barry. Excuse me, Polichuk tried to find the streaking gear. Hartson was a little too far for him. And back to Johnson. Barry now, Adams in long. Johnson, and on the far side, coming back in, Federo. A shot, stick saved by Flagler. Up the near wall, Johnson couldn't keep it in. Gerhardson will chase after him, and Johnson able to keep the puck. Back now on the far side, Brun. Johnson back to Federo. Adams looked far side, gotten there by Water Street. Water Street on the far corner. Water Street still with it. Battled there by Ross. Hunter Long in to help him. Gotten there by Barry. Barry on his knees playing the puck behind the net. Still loose on the goal line on the far side. Ross comes up, but it takes a big hit from Water Street. It's sent all the way back down the ice and is somehow going to be an icing call. I couldn't even tell whose stick that came off of. John? You know what? I, I took a moment there. I started to step away from you, Chris, but trying to get some insight on the goal still. You know, I went down to our, our sports information director, Jerry, Jerry Riley. He has no idea. Went down to talk to one of the parents that had maybe a better look. Chris, still nothing. No clarity there. 8.58 here to go in the middle period. We'll get a better answer for you in the break. Uh, nonetheless, face off to the blocker side of Flagler, Carlson gets there first. Carlson chips it ahead, and that'll go all the way down. No icing is the call. Polichuk in there first. Oh, he takes out his man. Polichuk sends it in front. We have a chance here. Wilmer, oh, he gets slew-footed. Then a puck will be bounced off the stanchion. Sent in front. Kept in momentarily. Freeman will play it now in his own end. Plays one up. Taken there by Boyd, and he'll wait for some help. Backhands one. That one's into the stands. Another souvenir puck here in Steel Hall. 8.29 to play for Fredonia well, and Oswego, I guess, in this second period. Faceoff will be at center ice. Fredonia allowing two goals here to the visiting Oswego Lakers in this second period. As John said earlier, we will get an explanation on that other goal uh, in the intermission and relay that information to you when we get it. A hit there by Martinson coming back to the way is Ortiz. Ortiz with speed. Ortiz taken down by Brun. A move there. Backhanded pass in front. Oh, what a goal. Touchdown this second of the game. What a goal there. A beautiful play. Marcus Ortiz makes the play to Wilbur. Wilbur to Shouse. Shot scores. Gotta love the line of Wilbur, Shouse, and Ortiz. They've combined for two goals and now four. On the night. What a beautiful play. A soft backhand pass from Wilbur on the far side to a streaking Shouse who somehow squeezed it under the bar. What a play there. Highlight real stuff. Somebody called John Bucci Gross at ESPN because that is a sports center top 10 play of the night. Back the other way comes Barton, the second, excuse me, the first goal scorer for Oswego. 
Far side hurl of hate around the net. Oh, Flagler makes a diving save. Pucks to loose. It's in front of Flagler. That one is kept out for sure. If that one's a goal, I'll quit my day job and my night job, folks. I'll quit the job I don't have, but wow, what a play there. Jeffrey Flagler, just some unbelievable goal tend. Are you kidding me? You're hearing it here first. Some unbelievable goaltending from the senior netminder who was playing off of his rocker. Jimmy Craig is listening to this game right now, hopefully at least, and he is clapping for the saves of Jeff Flagler. The diving stacked pad saves prevalent as ever, as it was in the 1980 Olympics with Team USA. Nonetheless, Michael Freeman plays it along for Kaufman. Batted down there by Long, he comes on with it. Long squeezed off the puck, played by Morgan. Oh, wow! He's written into the boards by Federer. Wow! That'll be a penalty, John. Just a real dirty play. There, you hate to see that. Disgusting is the word that comes to mind there. But you know what? That'll be a two-minute penalty uh, for giving him the business. Wow, just you know, scary play there. It was a disgusting looking play. Um, that's that's all I really have to say. Um, getting some feedback here. Um, you, you hope that Morgan's okay because uh, he took a high hit and safety first in this league. And Jimmy Morgan still on the ice. Penalty to number 23, Sean Federo. Two minutes for whatever the call was. Didn't hear it. Uh, but nonetheless, Mitchell Hurlahey, the penalty killer for the Lakers, coming in now. Kaufman defending him. Hurlahey got one in front. Puck was loose. Puck still loose. Oh, and it's under Flagler. What a save from Flagler off of a scramble in front. He was down and out, didn't see the play, and a good tie up in front. Look to me from Zach White. He gets a piece of his man. Chris, back and forth action coming both ways. I don't know how that puck stays out, but Flagler does his best to sprawl out, makes that save. 7.18 to go. Verdonia on the power play. Wow, a quick shot there off the face off. Flagler able to keep that one out. Flagler has had several loose pucks in front of a wide open net when he's been down and out after making a fantastic save and his defense has helped him out plenty of times tonight. Taylor Bourne battling in the corner with D'Olivera. Still battling now on the far side. Hurlahey able to sauce one down the ice to the stick of the awaiting goaltender Flagler, who spins one up for Wilbur. He's got an open man, Taylor Bourne. Taylor Bourne, Oswego, was just making a line change. Wilbur, shot was oh, just played in there by Polichuk. Just missed the net. Wilbur on the near wall again. And Wilbur one. shot tipped high and wide. And we're coming back the other way. Here's a chance here, a two-on-one. Shot, Flagler with a pad save. And here comes Bourne. Oh, and that'll be a whistle here as the net boring. Chris, 52 seconds to go here on the power play, and it's still 2-2, two to two, but wow, some really exciting action here. Comes off of it, 27 to go in the middle period, but fans have gotten their money's worth tonight as both teams are really laying it all on the line, going back and forth here. But boy, what a chance there. Polichuk gets a tip in front. Rebound sitting right there. And here's a chance here for Oswego. But Hunter Long comes up with it. He'll leave it on for Zach White. Zach White, the junior, is playing in his last game as a Blue Devil as he'll be moving on into the academic world, pursuing his dream to become an engineer. Down now, Neil, also the stick of Marcus Ortiz. Squirts loose to Kaufman on the near wall. Defended there by Neal. Kaufman skates along the blue line, finds a man. It's Ortiz on the far side. Sauce behind his own net. 30 seconds to go on the Fredonia power play. Battling for it there is Morgan. Johnson in this side. Shot saved by Zawadzki. A nice save there from the Oswego State netminder. And the puck will be rimmed around the boards. Ortiz gets there first. He'll send it in hard low to Morgan. Morgan waits. Even five-on-five five hockey now as the Oswego State player gets back on the ice. Zach White has time. White! Oh, shot blocker saved there by Zawitzki. Played low. Zach White gets in on his man. Morgan able to get in. We have a two-on-one chance here. Here's Water Street. Water Street waits, winds, fires. Oh, and it's in the net. And that's a, a fluky-looking goal off the blocker here. And that'll be a 3-2 lead for Oswego. A two-on-one chance ends up in the back of the net. And I don't know why we're getting some, 
some feedback from the fans here, but that's a nice goal from Water Street. He waits with some patience on a two-on-one play, and that'll put Oswego back in. Now uh, Oswego's up three to two, the well-traveled fan base of the Oswego Lakers, uh, and they're cheering on their team here right down in front of us. Raguseo gets the puck taken away by Jelinski. Mainello now and Jamie Young on the far side, played by Holshaw. Sticked away there by Carlson, played all the way back to Federo in the neutral zone. Federo played one up to Botton, Carlson had it, and then Mainello flung one mindlessly into the middle of the ice. Carlson leaves one on the far side to Jelinski. Carlson again, blockered away by Zawadzki. On the near wall now, being battled for by five different players. Puck rimmed around here. Max Ross fresh on the ice. He'll pinch in. He keeps the play alive. Down low to Schaus. He already has two on the night. Schaus battling for it now. He loses it. It's coming back the other way with numbers. Here is Botton. Rich Botton trying to make a move around Freeman. Was able to poke it away from him. Jelinski now with the puck. He'll sauce one. And that'll go almost the length of the ice. Icing not called as the puck just trickled and stopped just before the goal line. Sneath, the goal scorer, one of the goal scorers for Oswego, and now played by Ross. Ross up to Polichuk, bounces loose into the neutral zone. Played there again by Boyd, who circles around and sauces one back out of his own zone. Ross dumps one back in wide of the net of Zawadzki and played there by Hart. Polichuk able to, able to keep it in momentarily. Played along by Gerhardson. Polichuk doing a great job this year, Chris. He's at a point a game now, and he's really come into his own as of late. Here we have a chance here. Oswego drives wide, sent behind the net. Martinson playing his man tough. He's worked hard. Still loose. Martinson gives battle. Polichuk finally comes up with it here. Takes a funny bounce off the stanchion. We'll have a chance here. Oswego really doing a good job keeping Fredonia hemmed in their own end. Puck controlled here, just behind the goal line. Martinson on his man, and Oswego still with it. We have a chance here in front, scores! A big goal there, and it makes it four to two with just over three minutes to go here. Oswego takes their biggest lead of the night, and that Flagler really didn't have a chance there, Chris. Oswego gets the puck on the goal line, gets to the middle of the ice, and a nice shot high above Flagler, who was screened on the play. A nice shot was circled there by Connor Boyd, and that is his first goal, the freshman from Fairport. They'll keep that puck in the Oswego bench. I had a chance to coach Connor Boyd when he was in Rochester. Really hardworking kid. You know, obviously a Blue Devil fan here and myself, but you know, happy to see that young man get rewarded. Loose puck here. There's Sam Wilbur. He'll play it ahead to Ortiz. Ortiz takes a big bump. Now Todd Schaus gives chase to his man. Wilbur in on it with Ortiz. Oh, we'll have a chance here. Coming wide speed with it. Oh, a nice move there in front. Oh, and a good look there. Coming back the other way. Here's Todd Schaus. He plays it ahead to Carlson. Carlson checked, and we'll have another chance here. Coming back the other way. Shot. Flagler makes the save. He's run into. Sam Wilbur's lead pass. Oh, perhaps too many men play. Ortiz takes a big hit. He'll send it in behind the net. Played by Zawadzki there. Hart now with it. The long lead pass to Brian Water, excuse me, Chris Water Street. I don't know where I got Brian from. Nonetheless, Hunter Long back to the way for Fredonia. Has help in the form of Mitch Kaufman. Right around one man. Oh, what a chance! What a beautiful play there from Hunter Long. He's unable to put it in the back of the net. Oh, and here's another chance. Hunter Long keeps it in for a, a moment, but it's coming back the other way. Being sent in hard and deep there by Hurley. Hurley's pass gets to the point. Jimmy Morgan unable to get it out. Kaufman able to keep it out. Flagler makes a big save there after some back and forth action, Chris. This has been a very entertaining game for all those in attendance. Flagler doing his best to keep this at four to two. He didn't have much help there on either of those goals, but playing in what is his last game as a Fredonia Blue Devil, he has made everybody that's a Blue Devil fan very proud of his effort. Four to two the score here, John. How about these stats? Fredonia's got 11 shots. Zawanski has nine saves. Oswego, 36 shots. Flagler has made 32 saves in the game. Oh, and a beautiful chance there that just just hopped over the stick of number 26, Bart. 
Play yeah. now behind the net. It'll be Martinson and Barton battling for it in the far side. Martinson able to get it momentarily. And the same two will battle once again. Same place. Just a few seconds later, Martin still had it. Played there by Brunn. Brunn being battled with by Jelinski. Comes all the way out to the neutral zone. It'll be number 74, Johnson, playing it for Oswego. Sauce has won the length of the ice. Flagler decides against touching it. Mitchell Herlihy, the first one there anyways. Zach White battling for it there with Herlihy. He gets around his net. Long lead pass. He finds Gerhardson. Gerhardson turns on the boards. Oh, Gerhardson with a nice move here. He's waiting for players to come in. Oh, bounces in front. Oh, and Wilbur, that's Polichuk that gets tripped up behind the play. Long lead pass intercepted by Carlson. He's hooked hard by his man. Puck squirts free. Oh, what a chance here. Two on one. Taylor Bourne in. Taylor Bourne shot just wide. Kept in there by Jamie Young. Tipped in front. Oh, another rebound chance from Bourne. Bourne being played hard by his man. 30 seconds to go. Palachuk battling in the corner. He sends it out in front. That'll be hung on for a whistle. 31 seconds to go. Back and forth auction here. Chris, what an exciting period of hockey. Definitely an exciting period, John. Just wish it had gone in the favor of your Fredonia Blue Devils. Uh, but an exciting game nonetheless, as you said earlier, for all in attendance. Oswego, the 4-2 lead right now, 31 seconds to play. Oswego wins the faceoff. That was Alex Botton coming back to the way. Ferreira plays one on for Holshoff. Holshoff plays one in front. Oh, puck was loose to the side of Flagler. Sticked away there by White. Behind the net now is Ferreira. Right up in the near wall is Hart. He leaves one on. Played 12 far seconds. Side by White. 12 seconds to go. It'll be sent all the way around. Oh, but here's Ortiz. Ortiz gets to it first. Oh, and he's played hard. And that'll be a penalty. And that's a big call here. Oh, and he gets kicked behind the play. Well, nonetheless, that'll be a two-minute minor. One second to go here. Fredonia, you're down by two, Chris, going into the final period. You couldn't ask for a better gift because you're down two. You know how hard it is to come back against a team like this, Oswego. They're used to playing with leads. Now, not much they can do here with one second left in the second, but going into the final period, you have some time to really draw up what you want to do. So, is Fredonia going to be able to get one on the board here? You have to think, as part of the coaching staff you're going to have some time here in the intermission to really draw up something but you see the back and forth play there a big goal there the fourth goal late for Oswego because as you know two goal lead dangerous lead in hockey you're absolutely right John unfortunately it is the visiting Oswego Lakers that have the two goal lead here at the end of 40 minutes uh, four Oswego, the goal scorers, TJ Sneath, Connor Boyd, Andrew Barton, and Chris Waterstreet in no particular order. Mitchell Herlihy, Sneath, Boyd, Kenny Neal, Sean Federo, Christopher Brunn, and Trent DeRocher, each with one assist. And then for Fredonia, it's been the same three men every time, Wilbur and Ortiz, each with two assists. Todd Schaus, the two on the scoreboard for Fredonia. So we'll come back for this third period in a little over 10 minutes here from Steel Hall. For Jared Belschwander and John Cullen, I'm Chris Hoyt. Thank you for listening. We'll be back in 10 minutes, folks. Rome. Creepy, eh? You can get more information at publicradioplayer.org. You can search for WCVF on the public radio...
Brooks, Chris Hoyt, Jared Belschweiner, and John Cullen here with you from Steel Hall Ice Arena on the campus of the State University of New York at Fredonia. Oswego visiting, playing some hockey, and they're having quite a swell time with a 4-2 goal lead. Fredonia enters the third period on a power play. Uh, it's number three, J.J. Hart in the box for Oswego, who wins the opening faceoff. Back to uh, Chris Ragaseo, and he dumps it in all the way behind Flagler. Kept in by Herlihy, a good penalty kill here for the Lakers. Oscar Gerhardson now behind his own net will orchestrate the offense. Taylor Bourne streaking along the near wall. Found Freeman. Freeman with a chance. Freeman couldn't go. Oh, found one in front. Polichuk couldn't get a shot off. Sam Wilbur lays it down on Polichuk now. Near side, Freeman. Freeman at the point. Down to Gerhardson. Gerhardson playing left wing tonight. Pass was not far enough for Freeman. Able to be kept in by Fredonia. Polichuk on the near wall. And taken there by Hurley. He's got a trio of Fredonia defenders around him. He'll take it anyway. He's killing some more time on the penalty. Freeman with the puck again behind his own net. He'll wait for a line change from the, your Blue Devils. And we'll go on the offense from here. Hunter Long leaves, excuse me, Ortiz left it back for Freeman who gets it back. Going over the blue line. Marcus Ortiz gets to the puck. And it's chipped back up. Adams racing for it. Gotten there by White. He'll have to retreat all the way back into his own zone because the puck was still loose, actually. Kaufman now on the near side. He'll take a few steps and look for Morgan. Pass was cut off by Christopher Brunn, the Swede from Stockholm. Zach White with it now. 25 seconds to go on the Fredonia power play. Zach White gets Hunter Long on the near side. On the long, stops, turns, turns again. Sends one back behind the net for Kaufman, who leaves it on there for Morgan. Jimmy Morgan on the far side. Finds White at the point. White, a wrist shot, was blocked away. Was in the equipment of Raguseo momentarily. And then squirted loose and was covered up by Zawadzki. Some business after the whistle, but... You know, Mitch Kaufman, a senior playing in, in his last game as a Blue Devil, he's, his work ethic, his determination, his ability to play for his teammates really just speaks volumes about his character and what the Blue Devils try to create in this hockey culture. He's, he's such a phenomenal young man. Um, it's a pleasure of mine to be able to have coached alongside him. So, you know, you see a chance there right off the, right off the hop. Um, Manello doing his best here um, to try to get some offense going. Three seconds left here. DeMarco comes up with it. Five on five hockey now. In the near corner to our right. Jelinski and DeMarco battling a whole shot. And another man for Oswego coming back with it is Botten. And uh, Ferreira just a half step ahead of Alex Botten. And the offsides will be called. Fredonia face off in front of their own bench on the far side. Oswego wins that one. Back to Brunt. Brunt dumps it in. Flagler plays it behind the net now. Carlson and Botten is there. Botten has the puck on the far half wall. Bottin's whole shot in front. Puck was saved by Flagler, was caught between his wrist and the extended part of his blocker. What a nice save there. Face off will be to the left of Flagler. Two and a half minutes gone by in the last 20 of these 60 minutes to be played in Steel Hall. Polichuk tried to get one on, was played instead by Holshoff. Holshoff got it back and had one squirt wide of Flagler. On the far side now, played up to Brun. Brun a shot, whiffed on that one as Polichuk is putting pressure on him. Behind the net now, Taylor Bourne. Backhanding one Whoa. in front. And it slides in. Wow, what a play there. Ferreira. Little, little sloppy right there. It just kind of slid right past Flagler's glove. Ferreira was on the backhand looking for the wraparound opportunity. Got one across to Botten and he put one home. 5-2 Lakers.
Oscars. Just thinking that uh, Fredonia was doing a pretty, pretty good job of not collapsing into that kind of uh, de desperate defensive position. And uh, just then they gotta just do that. And Oswego enjoying spreading the wealth amongst goals just as Fredonia did against Cortland last night. Except this time, Fredonia's on the losing end currently. Adams on the far side now, wrists one, was blocked away there. And now, it is gone up into the mesh behind Flagler, 16.40 to play in this third period, 5-2 Oswego. Alex Bott in the most recent goal on the scoreboard for the guys in green here tonight. The green guys doing their best to keep the Blue Devils at bay here. Block loose in front, Flagler with a save, another chance, blocked away by Jamie Young. This young man has done a great job. Oh, and Flagler takes one high and he'll cover up. That one floated in front of Flagler like a knuckleball, if you will. And he gets his 34th save of the night on 39 shots. Flagler, you know what, he battles and, and that's what makes him such a competitor and his ability. A long lead pass, it's Morgan. Morgan gets to his back and he's hooked down and there'll be a penalty coming up here. Face off play again, run to perfection and that's what they call the Dukes play. Jimmy Morgan, able to use his burst of speed, catches it on his backhand, Chris, which is very hard to do, and he's able to squeak in and create an opportunity here for the Blue Devils. Fredonia will go back on the power play. It'll be Alex D'Olivera heading to the box for Oswego. 16-16 to play, had to take the opportunity as the time was the same in the minutes and seconds there, John. No, well, well observed there, Chris. Clock one here by Fredonia. Jack White waiting here, waiting. Feeds a one-time shot high and wide. Ortiz kicks it back to the point. White back to Kaufman, shot in the howitzer. And that'll be covered up here. No rebound on that play. A good save there by Zawadzki. That'll be his 11th, or excuse me, 12th save of the night on 14 shots. Hasn't been very busy, but he's played well, John. One interesting note, you see some of these Blue Devils playing in their final hockey game. No matter the score, you see them lay it all on the line. And that's what makes this group so special, Chris. You know, the chips on the table. Oh, and a oh, big hit there. hit by Marcus Ortiz on Raguseo. That one did not look pleasant. Well, you just want to make sure that both kids are all right, and, and you see there the Oswego player get right up, so you're happy to see that, but a big, big piece of physicality there. And 116 to go here. Blue Devils collected behind their own net. Taylor Bourne, the freewheeling senior, chips it ahead, but that'll be sent the length of the ice. Blasted back down by Herlehe, who's been out there all too often on the penalty kill for Oswego. They've taken four penalties tonight for a total of eight minutes. Taylor Bourne streaking up the ice. Wilbur was tripped up. Well, he, no call except for the offsides on Fredonia. John, I just want to touch on Marcus Ortiz really quick. We saw him send the Oswego captain into the boards very hard there. When, he, when I got here last year and started doing these hockey games, it was Marcus Ortiz, you could say it every single shift with a big hit, with his physical play, all that good stuff. He's added some speed and a scoring touch to his game to become a real true all-around player for these Blue Devils. Marcus Ortiz, great credit to him, and he's only a junior. He's got one more year here to improve, as I'm sure he will, the junior from Richardson, Texas, John. You know what, well said, but how about a quick tip of the hat to Taylor Bourne, Jeff Flagler, Mitch Kaufman, Daniel Martinson, Zach White, and Ryan Wilkinson. 
Um, they exemplify what it means to be a Blue Devil on and off the ice. Um, six young men that have done so many, so many great things, not only with their play, but their work in the community. And I think that speaks volumes to the, to the culture that Coach Meredith has created here. Um, the Blue Devil hockey team has, has taken pride in, in what they're able to do off the ice in the community and also with initiatives like Pink the Rink and another souvenir souvenir puck here. But Chris, I think it's really important to note, I talked to a few of the guys after the, the Pink the Rink game and what they were able to do uh, was really incredible. So just a quick tip of the hat to, to everything that they're able to do, Chris, that's what it's all about. At the end of the day, it's a hockey game, but for these young men to, to be out in the community, to helping the senior citizens, to raising, which is over $67,000 to breast cancer awareness, I think that is truly incredible. I agree with you, John. Something that was mentioned a heck of a lot in the pregame tribute to the seniors, their work in the community, and I was on Twitter during the intermission, and I went to their hockey page, and I mentioned that uh, Fredonia helping the senior citizens for the sixth year in a row, fourth year for a few of these guys here in white tonight. Very important is the community aspect, just as much is, excuse me, just as much as the play on the ice as a one time when it was blasted wide by Holshoff. I'm sure if you took a poll, that Holshoff would have the hardest shot on the ice tonight. He's blasted several. And that is probably the craziest goal I have ever seen in my life. An unfortunate bounce there as it goes up and over Flagler. Chris, one of those fluky plays where as a goaltender you really don't have a chance. And you saw Flagler, he was down in good position. That puck bounces up and over him. Um, a tough way to go out for that young man. Um, but you know what, I think that Jeff Flagler, eh, his hard work, his dedication, and not only that, his leadership. Um, something that as a goaltender, you're not really looked upon as a, as a leader in the truest sense of the word, not able to have a letter on your, in your jersey, but here's a young man that has worked his butt off for his teammates. He's very well respected throughout the locker room. So I'm not sure who will get credit for that goal. It'll be number 11, David Ferreira. Assist. Sean Holshoff and Alex Botten coming back right the other way is Water Street. Tried to make a move around Martinson, was well defended by the Swedish defender from Malmo, Sweden. Played there by Zach White. And John, one of the things I'd, I'd prefer to see in the remaining 13 minutes of this game is Taylor Joseph getting goal for Oswego. I would love to see that. The kid hasn't played the goal since he was nine years old, but he's the son of former NHL player Curtis Joseph, so goaltending is in his veins, John. Spinning with it now, what a move, Barry. He had an impressive spin move to the net earlier on Flagler in the second period. Born with it now, squirts loose to the near corner down to our left. Bourne will leave it over for Jamie Young, who's streaking off the bench. Plays the one into the gloves of the Oswego captain, Chris Raguseo. Good to see him back on the ice after that big hit earlier from Marcus Ortiz. Boyd tried to punch it along into the chest of Carlson, who dumps it in, and will chase after it. Raguseo will beat him there. Back in one of the far corner, Hunter Long now. And Carlson played there by Boyd back for Federo. Played across by Sneath, going back to get it as Boyd. Boyd on the far side, played by Carlson, leaves it on the near side for Sneath, who spins around Young, takes a hit from Long, and it's played along now to Duro Scher. Takes a high hit from Long, and it's battled four in the corner now. First one to it is Sneath, spins between a pair of Jordan defenders, Connor Boyd now, on the near wall, back to Sneath. Sneath and Boyd, and Kaufman hits Sneath up high. Sneath gets up. Everybody okay? Everybody okay? Back down. Duro sure took a hit. Jimmy Morgan tried to find one of the skates of Raguseo. It's backhanded across by Brunt. 
Run to Hurlahay on the far wall. Takes a hit, light one from Taylor Bourne. Played now by Freeman. Freeman found a man, Schaus, on the far wall. Was played away from him by Johnson and backhanded out by Neal. Freeman now will circle with it. Tried to get one out of the zone, kept in by Neal. Neal shot, blocked away from Flagler by Hurlahay. Leaves it back for Neal, an open shot at the net. And a sprawling Flagler guides that puck safely away from the net. Grabbed there by Brunn, who takes a cross-check from Ortiz as Schaus plays it in. Johnson now behind Zawadzki. And on the far wall now, now in the middle of the ice. We'll play one up for Neal, who's still on the ice at the near wall. Sauced one towards Flagler for Hurlahay. Was played there in the far corner by he and Martinson. Back up now, Braun takes a hit by DeMarco. Keeps his balance though, luckily, or else he would have fallen ugly into the boards. Johnson flips one back into the Fredonia zone. Played there in the far corner by Martinson. Martinson on the near side. Pass was off the feet of Botten. Back up to Jelinski and played there by Dalavera. Back to Hart and back up to Botten and takes another hit from Martinson. Now Jelinski got one on. Martinson played one on. Dalavera gloves it down again. Jamie Young now with nine and a half to play. Wheels are on the net. Just kidding. Stops. Goes back to the near side. Finds Polichuk on the near wall. He fires one up to Gerhardson. Lost one in his skates and sauced one wide of Zawanski as Carlson gets taken down in the middle of the ice. Gerhardson tried to find an opening. Played away by Zawanski. Now Gerhardson still. And Polichuk. Polichuk tried to find a backdoor pass to Bourne. Instead, it will eventually go up into the mesh. Just over nine minutes to play here. Oswego, the 6-2 lead. You know what, 9-11 to go here in the third period. Chris, it's been a pleasure all season to call these games with you. I wish you nothing but the best going forward. And also, you know, nothing but the best to, to all those Blue Devils playing in their final game tonight. They've worked their, their heart out um, on and off the ice, and, and you gotta love to see all they've done in, in, in their lives and in, in their hockey careers. You know, hopefully some of them that wish to keep playing will do so. Um, but especially, you see Mitch Kaufman battle for it here. I cannot say enough good things about this young man. He has really shown through his, his hard work what, what it takes to be a successful, not only athlete, but a, su a, su a successful person. Um, just a quick tip of the hat to him and also all those other ones. I know uh, for Ryan Wilkinson, he's a young man that, that can't be out here tonight because of a shoulder injury. And you know it's got to kill him to, to not be there. But th there's somebody, it would have been very easy for him to pack it in. Uh, but he, he's been down there with his teammates the whole time. Flagler makes a big save there. Battling for it still. Wow. Sprawled out again. Two great saves there by Flagler, who's had coming up on 40 tonight. Credited with 36 saves currently. The senior netminder from Owen Sound, Ontario. Hearing him talk about hockey, John, he's in one of my classes, and it's a, a class about sports. Hearing him talk about hockey, you can hear the happiness and excitement in his voice. A great kid, on and off the ice. As you said earlier, wins and losses don't do him justice. He's played so well. It's about keeping your games, excuse me, keeping your team in the game for a goaltender, and he's done that in most every contest he's played in that I've seen. Uh, a great guy on and off the ice, Jeff Flagler, tip of the hat to he and the rest of the Blue Devil seniors here tonight. Taylor Bourne with it now behind the net, sticked away there by Federer, who spins away from Polichuk and leaves one on for Adams. Adams now on the near side, flipped one, and we'll have our fourth souvenir puck of the game as three young kids battle for that one. They're going to have to split that one in thirds. 7.51 to play here. Matt Zawadzki, the junior from Fort Mill, South Carolina. He's made 14 saves on 16 shots, John. Hasn't been too busy, but he's kept the puck out of the net when he's needed to. Face-off battle for there. White pokes it on. 
Played further by Raguseo. Freeman backhands one in as he takes a hit. Spun away from Raguseo. We have a chance for Fredonia. Puck sauced through, couldn't find Minello. Jelinski a backhander, battled for, loose on the side of the net. Zawadski, I believe, covered it up. He's got some rough stuff after the whistle. That was DeMarco and Connor Boyd going at it. Rich DeMarco from Niagara Falls, Connor Boyd from Fairport. It's a battle of a pair of Western New Yorkers here. 7.31 to go here. Not the result that you wanted as a Blue Devil fan, but you have to be proud with their effort. So easy to pack it in and, and quit this one. Um, but you see them battling to the final buzzer goes. And for all those playing in their final game here, you know, you have to be ecstatic about what they've been able to do here. Like I said, hockey, is just a game, but so many people battling with real issues away from the rink, and you know, so incredibly proud to be a part of this Blue Devil hockey family. Um, a lot of young men out there that you know, perhaps playing in their, their final game of competitive organized hockey, and you really, you really wish them nothing but the best going forward, Chris. Absolutely, John. We're gonna have another penalty here. I believe this one will be on Ferdonia. As uh, it looks like it was number 19, TJ Sneath, who drew the call for Fredonia. Boyd having words still with Jamie Young. Uh, and it's Michael Freeman going to the box. The freshman out of Rancho Cucamongo, California. Probably the best place to say in the entire world. Rancho Cucamongo, California. In the running for that would be Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan, in Red Deer, Alberta. Red Deer, Alberta. Mitch Kaufman's hometown, the assistant captain for your Blue Devils. It'll be matching minors here, Chris. 6.52 to go. You hear the referees discussing it right now, what the issue may be. But um, either way, matching minor penalties and some rough stuff after the whistle. You don't like to see that, uh, but you want to make sure that the players are safe and that there's no, no extracurriculars going on. Absolutely, John. Number 20 is in the box, Boyd and Freeman. The one-timer blasted home by Raguseo. Flagler has faced several and a couple have found nylon. You know what? There's nothing that young man can do there. It's just an absolute howitzer of a shot. And uh, it's a tough one. So, uh, you know, a tough way to go out for him, but uh, it's, it's just a heck of a shot there. As um, Raguso really steps into one there. How much you can you can ask of your goaltender there? The four-on-four four goal for Oswego makes it seven to two, Lakers. Kaufman now had one sticked away by Neal. Back with it, Neal battling Hunter Long. Puck was still loose, played away by Raguseo, the most recent goal scorer for Oswego. Played to the new man on the ice. Steven Johnson, and now gotten back up by Andrew Barton. Played across now, Raguseo, and if he moved to keep it in the zone. Barton on the far side, Holshoff. Squirts loose to Raguseo at the point. We've got four on four hockey for a minute, 10 more. Barton on the far side, Zach White defending him. Kaufman, Gerhardson, and Ross. All four have played defense. Two of them converted to wingers. Fresh off the bench, Alex Bond, and oh, what a save by Kaufman. Flagler dove out for a poke check, and Kaufman able to keep that one out of the net. Holshoff went for another howitzer, and that one blocked away from him. Holshoff's howitzer. And you know what? An incredible poke check there from Flagler. Down and out, had nothing to do. He makes a great play, and then Mitch Kaufman just goes to speak volumes about that young man. He, he's able to lay it on the line in a five-goal hockey game. He makes an incredible play to keep that out of the net. Just unbelievable stuff. It's unbelievable. It is, John. It's unbelievable. 
And, you know, Holshaw's howitzers, that could be a future deli name. I kind of like that one. Holshaw's howitzers. Clean pass there, just misses Mark. Paul Chuck Wines fires off a of skating front. Todd shows the chance, and he just misses. Martinson Wines fires, speak shot. Oh, and Joust just misses the hat track. Zawadzki getting a lot of work now. Not as much, a little bit more than he had all game, honestly. Dragaseo plays one up for Bonten, was played too far there. And Jelinski will skate with it, plays one off the near uh, glass, and then gets it back, fires one back to Young, who's behind his own net. Oswego, the rare feat of seven, excuse me, seven different goal scorers tonight on the ice. Played here by Dalavera. Long had it in his skates. White tried to poke it free. Dalavera comes up with it, dumps it on before taking a hit from DeMarco and some extra stuff. No whistle, but that's okay. They play on. Hit there by DeMarco on the far side. Water Street in low. Defended by White and Long. 350 to play now. DeMarco didn't get to the puck fast enough. And Jelinski is able to sauce one out to Dalavera. He reaches for it and gets it now. Thought about a pass to Adams, but kept it. And will dump it into the Fredonia zone. 3.30 to go here at the final game of the season here at Steel Hall Ice Arena. Glove down there and coming back the other way. A winding, firing shot. And it'll be whistled down for what looks to be an offside call here. Seven to two, your score for your visiting Oswego State Lakers. They will come out on top here tonight. And what looks to be the final game for your Fredonia Blue Devils. Also in action tonight, the Cortland Red Dragons will are visiting Buffalo State. Geneseo Ice Knights are visiting the Plattsburgh Cardinals. Oswego obviously here at Fredonia. And the Brockport Golden Eagles are in Potsdam, where they are. It's the best shot in front. And that'll be hung on to for a whistle. Uh, looking at the Suniac playoff standings, Chris. Um, the number one seed, and they have clinched it, is the Plattsburgh Cardinals, who, Chris, I might add, have been at the top of the standings for probably the past 10 years, or at least as long as I've been here. Jimmy Morgan wins it to Martinson. Martinson shot just wide. Morgan in on it there. He takes a big hit. He'll send it down low. Morgan battling in with it with a couple of players. There's Kaufman. Kaufman shot high. And that'll be gloved down by the netminder Zidwitzki. Just a bit too high, but not high enough. Kaufman, Morgan, Hunter Long, the forward for your Blue Devils. Match by Martinson. Oh, shot in front. And that'll be covered up there again by Zidwetsky. 2.48 here to go in the final period of play. Not the result you want as a Blue Devil fan, but with that being said, some bright moments here and what looks to be a very bright future for a lot of these Fredonia State players. Uh, for all those playing in their final competitive hockey game tonight, you have to appreciate the effort given by a lot of these Blue Devil players. Martinson playing his man. The defenseman turned forward, just finding a few shifts here on the back end. Coming back the other way, Jimmy Morgan will send it in deep. Morgan's dump and attempt will be collected there and skated back the other way by Hurley. Hurley leaves it for Barton. Barton sends it in, and that'll be collected by Freeman. Freeman uh, rubs off his man and finds Wilbur. Wilbur moves it ahead to Ortiz. Ortiz getting played hard by two Oswego defenders. And, uh, oh, there's a big collision down low. And here we go, coming back the other way. A nice play from Ortiz. He'll leave it for Wilbur. It'll be sent into the neutral on White. Seam pass to Freeman, who finds Ortiz, who chips it in. 
Connor Boyd, the Fairport native, will leave it ahead for his man. Let's see. Coming in, shot blocked there by Freeman. A good block there. 130 to go here. Todd Schaus comes up with it here. Schaus, the smooth skating freshman, he'll chip it in. It'll be played there by Boyd. Boyd's pass intercepted. And that'll be left. Here comes DeRoche. DeRoche's hit hard by his man. Puck sent ahead. It'll be played in there. By DeRoche. Puck bouncing around here in a triple axle move there. And here comes Palcha. Palcha. He gets by his man. He leaves it for Bourne. Bourne battling with it now. Here comes Kaufman. Kaufman's lead pass intercepted, but White comes up with it for the Blue Devil. White sends it in deep. And that'll be played along behind the net. Rimmed ahead. Controlled by White. White passes it ahead to Martinson. Martinson, his pass is chipped down by Polichuk. 30 seconds to go here. And Oswego will control the puck here. Hunter Long in on the forecheck. It'll be rimmed around. Jimmy Morgan on it now. And 20 seconds to go here. Icing will be your call, and that'll just about do it here. As we are going to have a face-off to the blocker side of Zidwitzki. Chris, it's been an absolute honor. It's been a definite pleasure, and it's been a whole lot of fun. Not the result you want here in your final game, calling a Blue Devil hockey game, but a very bright future lies ahead of you, my friend. Hopefully we can reconnect for an NHL broadcast one day. But 10 seconds to go here as Oswego will have one final look. It'll be sent in, and that'll just about do it. For all those Blue Devil fans listening at home, it's been an absolute pleasure to call this season. <coughs> Not sure if I'll be back next year, but I would really like to take this opportunity to thank all those behind the scenes working at the radio station and the TV broadcast. Also, a real quick tip of the hat to the seniors playing in their final game as a Fredonia Blue Devil tonight. Taylor Bourne, Jeff Flagler, Mitch Kaufman, Daniel Martinson, Zach White, Ryan Wilkinson, absolute stand-up citizens. These young men have made it an absolute pleasure to, to stand by them through these battles, to be able to coach these young men. I uh, cannot say enough good things about this group. Uh, not the result they wanted here. Yeah, but you know what, they've done so many good things here for the, for the hockey team, for the school, but more importantly for the community. And uh, I wish them nothing but the best. Really, really class stand-up guys. And uh, you know, it makes me quite emotional here to, to see them go through the handshake line for the final time. They are an absolute great group of guys. And um, Chris, it, it's been a pleasure to work alongside you, my friend. I wish you nothing but the best. Uh, thank you for everything you've done for me. John, I, I gotta say the same for you, man. Uh, it's been incredible calling hockey games with you. The circumstance for which we were able to come on air is not favorable, but we've been on air ever since. And uh, I, I couldn't have had a better time calling games with you, man. I wish I was rich. I could buy a hockey organization with you. And uh, I'd sign all these Blue Devils, and you'd be the broadcaster right next to me. I'd give you half the team just for being you, buddy. As we get the stick lifts from the Fredonia Blue Devils one more time. Yeah, a disappointing season record-wise, but I couldn't be happier for these men. A great team on and off the ice, and they played their hearts out as they do in every single game. A tough one to swallow here, the loss against the Oswego Lakers, but as you said, more tip of the cap. Taylor Bourne, Jeff Flagler, Mitch Kaufman, Daniel Martinson, Zach White, and Ryan Wilkinson. A real quick shout out to the seniors from the basketball teams. Eric Zwierlein, Alexander Grace, Sabrina McCauley, Katie Devine, and Sammy Villarini. Shout out to all of you. You make us proud to be Blue Devils. Always will be supporters of you wherever I am in the world. Couldn't be happier being here at Fredonia. 
John with you, Jarrett with you, with everybody behind the scenes, as John said. Garrett Blackwell back at the station, folks. An emotional one here. Oswego takes it really quick. The goal scorers, David Ferreira, Chris Ragaseo, Alex Botton, TJ Sneath, Connor Boyd, Andrew Barton, and Chris Waterstreet for Oswego. Shouts the two tallies for your Blue Devils. For John Cullen and Jared Belschweiner, Garrett Blackwell back at the station. I'm Chris Hoyt. Thank you for listening one last time this season, folks. Go ahead, John. Thanks again for everybody tuning in at home. You Blue Devil faithful and all those visiting Oswego State fans, uh, best of luck to Oswego in the, in the playoffs. Uh, very, very, uh, very good team there. But uh, once again, thanks to everybody behind the scenes working. And thank you for the Blue Devil players. That's made my job so much fun. Thanks again, Chris. Uh, take care for all you Blue Devil fans. We'll see you next year. Thank <laughs> you.